हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टुडे वी हैव मिडनाइट पून कसित वताना द एग्जीक्यूटिव डायरेक्टर ऑफ एपकॉम व्हिच इज एशिया पैसिफिक कोएलिशन फॉर मेल सेक्सुअल हेल्थ एज वी ऑल नो मिडनाइट हैज प्लेड अ स्टीयरिंग रोल रियली चैंपियन चैंपियन द कॉज ऑफ मेल सेक्सुअल हेल्थ एंड नॉट ओनली इन द रीजन बट आल्सो इज इन्फ्लुएंस ग्लोबल पॉलिसी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट डेवलपमेंट हैपन इन थाईलैंड थाईलैंड because of especially because of community led interventions and of course uh, thai government has also done a lot on universal health coverage but community led interventions had shown that prep the pre exposure prophylaxis which is uh, which us fda had uh, approved it about 11 years ago in in um, 2012 Thailand is one of the few examples because of communities they showed that prep can really help to prevent uh, hiv and as well as post exposure prophylaxis apcom midnight has been on the front lines of um, uh, helping shape these community led interventions so welcome midnight so uh, so midnight what happened thank you for having me yeah thank you so midnight please tell us uh, uh, what what happened because there is uh, there's a development which happened which probably is going to affect prep and pep um, both so uh, can you please uh, uh, help share what happened oh i see i think as you mentioned um, thailand is one of the first um, you know countries in the asia um, um, region that um, has been providing pre exposure prophylaxis um, particularly through community led um, clinics so these are key population um, led um, clinics that have been at the forefront of ensuring that the communities know and are aware of uh, this new combination prevention tool and then they are they are able to then dispense um, prep at the clinics level as well as we know um there are structural barriers for um key populations to have access to um to prep so this is one of the ways that um the communities can ensure that um a stigma free services accessible services um is available for those that need it and particularly for those um much more at risk um of hiv yeah, particularly for um gay men and also cis men also transgender women in thailand um yet despite um having the um uh, the numbers to uh access pre exposure prophylaxis in thailand we are still not even reaching 20% of the needed number actually um bobby uh and because thailand was the chair of the unaids program coordinating board in um 2022 so just last year you know it was a chance for us to then demonstrate the thailand's leadership around um community led interventions particularly around the need to ensure integration of um HIV prevention in the community based clinics and also led by the communities themselves um and that's what exactly what happened at the um UNESP CB meeting in December last year that was held in Chiang Mai between um the 13th to the 16th um and then prior to that because um it was going to be well it was uh hosted in Thailand you know we have like two mornings basically that um the other um board members of programs coordinating board were able to see some of these interventions that Thailand is doing and also want to demonstrate as the best practice and what you know and then of course you know they demonstrated the projects that has the community working together with the government um for those that might not know one of the things that um, Thailand has been very good at uh, particularly integrating the you know south coverage for pre exposure prophylaxis into the health system so basically it means that um as you um enter and then access prep you don't need to pay for them so um so through different schemes um you know this can be paid for and then the community um, based clinics can then uh, get reimbursing uh, from from the state for providing those yeah this essential service so then what happened after the unit pcb meeting there was um well, there were two announcements made by one the government and one by the national health um social um security office saying that um basically the community based organizations or community led um clinics are not able to dispense pre exposure prophylaxis and also uh post exposure prophylaxis because it um it falls outside the interpretation of the laws basically around um who has the authority to dispense um this uh well medi- medicine in a community clinic so that was when then we then started to question like where does this come from what's happening um in the discussions because uh i mean the elections coming up maybe that's part of it but what we do know that there was a sudden interruptions of the people who were already accessing um prep services within this community led clinic so we were very disappointed to hear that um there were um, these two announcements being made 
right after the program coordinating board meeting and um, without having proper discussion with the committee groups. Uh, so how many people were receiving uh, PrEP? I have, I have read in news that there were thousands of people, right? Like through community-led Yes, yes, through community-led intervention. So these are these are currently the by far the largest um, uh, numbers of people receiving PrEP. So through the community-led um, clinics, basically. Uh, and what the, um, I guess the, the announcement made was saying like that, you know, the, for the community-based organizations to be able to dispense uh, pre-exposure prophylaxis, they have to then um, partner with the local um, or district um, hospitals. And then yeah, if without that, then any community, anyone who wants to access PrEP, they can access any um, facilities, you know, in the country. And we all know that um, that, doesn't happen um, automatically. Um, there's strife, um, you know, stigma discrimination within the healthcare facilities and the um, accessibility, you know, the friendliness, yeah, it's not always there as well. So these are the these are these are the concerns. And why would you want to disrupt services that's already, you know, well and in place to then, you know, shift it to the um, just the state um, facilities only. Uh, I had also read that uh, uh, UA, along with the uh, APCOM, along with eight other organizations, had uh, probably went to the Prime Minister office, right, to with an appeal. So, can you tell us more about it? Uh, what happened? Um, uh, what were your demands, which you probably have already, uh, you know, mentioned now? And uh, was there any response to that, and any follow up? I mean, that was great that we were able to kind of get to the parliament and deliver the the message there and um you know there was openness to um to receive our um our message so our, our message was basically saying that um we want to um the uh, the announcement to be reversed and that the community-based organizations can still continue to provide um these essential um, um services and not to disrupt um the uh the people are already on the um, pre-exposure prophylaxis and that there should be some, you know, some dialogues in terms of moving forward. If there are some um, legal issues um, that they need to deal with, but what do we have, you know, in the um, short term um, process? Uh, unfortunately, the the prime minister was not able to come and you know and, and receive this message. Um, but I think at least you know they were willing to come and meet us uh, with the other community groups. We have been um, as part of this um, nine organization coalition doing the um, change dot org. Um, uh, 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 petition as well and um and yeah, i think there were a lot of people who were not aware actually that this <laughs> this was going to be disrupted and you know there were lots of questions that being asked about okay what do we do where do we access these services where can we get it for free where can we get it where it's you know that that they can remain anonymous and you know why is this happening um so many questions asked and of course you know we, we also don't know what what uh, what were the decision making process and um and how to make sure that they, you know there's a lot more of a discussion and involvement with the community groups. Um, a few days after that meeting, actually, we were able to kind of get a mess, uh, uh, a meeting with the um, Minister of Public Health um, to discuss uh, more about going forward uh, on on our demands. And um, we feel like there, I think there is some uh, interpretation of how the the law is says currently. Uh, which then affects in the way that um, you know community groups are able to then provide um, services. So basically, um, if you're not uh, partnering with uh, a, a hospital, a, um, a government-based hospital or government-based clinic, um, you're really not able to um, dispense um, yeah medicines, right? Uh, so then it really restricts um, what the community-led clinics can do. Uh, so right now, you know the the you might have seen the announcement on the um, uh on 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 the website that kind of like basically saying oh look now you know we can resume um providing services in certain clinics that's because they have this partnership with the um maybe more friendly um yeah hospitals and those that have been um familiar with working with the communities but it also means that it, it's a little more a lot more challenging for the community groups to then approach and develop that partnership with the um uh, district hospital or the other provincial hospitals to then yeah start those provision of services what the communities can do right now is really just referring um to yeah these are the hospitals um or um clinics that are you know, that can provide and dispense prep so we're actually looking at um 
the quality of services being received in those um in yeah in those clinics and see okay uh you know are they are they actually that friendly um is the timing accessible what are the issues and we need to gather this kind of information to then provide back um to our government and say like you know this is where then you need to really double up on um, ensuring that you know if it's the law that needs to be changed to ensure that we meet the um the 2030 ending AIDS target, you know, which Thailand says it is really committed to, um, then yeah, we need to also double up in terms of the um, access to already um, good quality services through the community-led interventions. Yes, absolutely, totally. And uh, just friends, uh, uh, let me share that uh, yesterday, as of 1st February uh, 2023, when I saw this change.org uh, petition, there were almost 7,000 people who had signed uh, up and support, expressed their support. There's a lot of support. Um, so, uh, uh, so midnight, just to understand it clearly, so PrEP and PEP uh, are provided by the government or community-led interventions, procure it and then get reimbursed. Can you help us understand that? I think that's that's that, that's the crux of the of the discussions, um, which um it means like where the medicine is being stored and then where they're being dispensed uh, on who's able to dispense those. So right now, the interpretation is you know community groups are are not able to store those and then dispense that at the um, at the community clinics. However, with the partnership with their uh, with governments, uh, hospitals, and clinics, right, they can say okay, we've um uh, uh, we've uh like delegate the authority to do this through partnership yeah to these community groups to be able to then yeah give prep to those that needs it but it has to be uh, it has to be the hospitals or the clinics the state one that gives authority to a particular community to be able to do that whereas before yeah it used to be okay if you are competent to be able to um, dispense prep um, and you've been trained to do that then you're able to um, to provide prep as well yeah and uh, before this happened, uh, was government, uh, uh, I mean, government services, were they giving PrEP and PEP? Or was it essentially? Yes, in theory, in theory, in theory, yes, in theory, in theory yes. But then, of course, the um, in terms of the um, the the clinics that are, um, you know, actively looking at it, creating demand is actually from the community groups themselves saying, look, you know, come to our clinics because we have this... Um, combination prevention um, option available for you, but you need to get tested and you can do it here. It's really friendly. It can be after hours, you know, when it's really um, accessible and comfortable for you, right? We don't see the, um, well, at least not yet, how the, um, the state um, uh, service providers will be able to do this kind of actively outreach, right? To bring people into the services, that's one. And also ensuring that um, they are aware and sensitive of the needs of key populations once they enter and, and receive the services. Uh, you know, I mean, right now, I think it's really about they're looking at, okay, how do we get the communities to then bring someone into the clinics, right? And we can do much more than that. You know, we can be part of the um, solutions to ensure that the, the, the demands of um, this, you know, proven um, combination prevention works, uh, but it only works if we have the, you know, critical numbers um, of those accessing it. And right now, even if people praise that you know, Thailand is doing very well, we're still not even reaching the kind of scale that is needed to really ensure that they're moving down um, the new rates of HIV infections. So when this happened, this order came out in December. So uh, people who were receiving PrEP and PEP from community-led intervention, so what happened? Like services got disrupted, right? So they had, and in the government, these were not available or government systems were not functioning the way they should have. I mean, in terms of giving out. So, uh, so that, that, that are we understanding it correct, right? Like the services got disrupted. People were not able to. Yes. Yes. Access. That's right. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And now slowly yeah. it is being um, resumed. Right. Yes. Yeah. So, so what? Some are. Yeah. Some are, are able steps? to do that. Yeah. All right. Okay. Some. Yeah. There's a lot more discussions to be had. Um, right. uh, I think there's there's another meeting happening um, um, uh, later on this month as well. So there's a lot more conversations actually, um, Bobby, um, because we we're, we're not sure in terms of the kind of the long term um, approach uh, for the um, sustainability of um, access to um, HIV services, you know, through community led interventions. Um, where you know Thailand is committed to ending um, AIDS, 
um, and also committed to working with the communities. So I think there is there has to be a lot more of those conversation about you know what does that mean in terms of task sharing? You know where where do where do the states see the role of the community? Um, that could be much more um, uh, active. Um, and and rather than you know being ones that just do the um, uh, kind of outreach and then do the um, referrals, that's not what uh, the community would like to do, and that's not what the community has been doing. Um, we're actually looking to be much more an active partner and uh, you know servicing the communities that we know the um, the state are not reaching right, and the, and the ones that um, will not go and access. Um, the state services, you know, for what, for whatever reason, it is an option. Yeah, um, you know, in Thailand, that's you know, at least I think there are options where you can go to the state one, you can go to the private one if you want to pay for it. Um, but then I think the critical bit is that um, you know we we also need to have these community um, led interventions as well, and it's already been proven that it's working very well. Uh, and so yeah, we don't understand why yeah they would want to disrupt. Um, these kind of services through the communities. And these are the um, communities um, that um, they were profiling, you know, to other member states at the uh, PCB meeting last month, or in, um, in December, 2022. Yes, absolutely. And uh, yeah, and those social media posts I still uh, uh, have uh, where Thai, Thai government uh, was showcasing the, uh, um, the actual really good work which is being done by the communities. So, uh, so midnight just for my own clarity and understanding. So, you, uh, so UHC scheme is servicing around eighty percent or more than population, right? And then there are I read there are two more social uh, social security scheme and uh, civil service uh, medical benefit scheme. So, can you help me understand the difference between these three? <laughs> oh gosh, <laughs> yeah, no. When it comes, yeah, when it comes to funding, I think this is where everyone gets a little bit confused, you know, because you're like, you know, we're not like. You know what the government is trying to do is to um to put all the three schemes into one so like one pot basically right and then make it accessible for everybody so um civil serv civil servants have their own scheme and then if you are like, employed you know you can get um you can get your um social security so you can pay into that right and then there's another one that there's like you know universal health coverage which is like um I don't know like in the NHS I suppose you know in in the UK right yeah so so these are different different parts and people pay different things into that into those parts right yeah <laughs> and then so yeah they want they want and then so then and then the the issue is like if you go if you go to access service you have to tell you know the hospital or whatever like oh this is through this scheme to that scheme right does that make sense and then of course so there's a fourth scheme which you know you can buy your own one obviously yeah you can buy your own um yeah like you know insurance right for health yeah that's another one so um yeah so it depends how much you pay and how <laughs> and yeah and who pays for it and where and where you access that pot of funding right the uh, the national um, health security office is the one that actually does the reimbursing for the um pre-exposure prophylaxis and pep for the community-led interventions yeah so th th those are the ones that people are accessing so it, it means that it's actually through the um the the universal health coverage scheme yeah for the communities right because yeah so then it's it's yeah so it's um it's free for them yeah right and um so do uh, so are there some people who are left out of as i understand they're left out of any of these schemes also right like my oh, yes of course or, yes. yes migrant workers definitely yes. migrant workers who are yeah who are not um particularly those who are not registered as well but there are like you know um uh community groups that are able to then provide those services through, um, you know, some donor funding that knows, you know, the realities of um, of Thailand. Um, you know, I think in particularly when we were uh, in um, in Chiang Mai, you know, as well, you know, like particularly migrant workers are able to access this kind of like, you know, outside the, you know, outside the um, uh, universal health coverage scheme of Thailand to be able to access um, services. Yeah, absolutely. It comes down to who pays, right? right. Probably. <laughs> right, 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 and um, and that that is why these community-led interventions are so so important. Like because they're reaching out to the people who are so difficult to reach otherwise or through these domains. Okay, have, have I missed out anything which you would have like to say on this issue? Um, well, I, I know that you already also reach out to Swing. I think that's great. Um, yeah. you know that um, you're trying to get their different in, um in um yeah discussions because they actually 
you know, they actually the service providers themselves that have been, have been the affected ones, right? So Upcom is really more like, you know, advocacy organization and we're trying to coordinate this um, in a much more bigger platform to bring, to make sure that our voice is, you know, much more stronger, right? The other one that I think you should reach out to is the um, IHRI. I don't know if you reach out to them as well. Um, yeah, because they've been the one who's providing technical support um, through um, to the community um, clinic um yeah in terms of um providing um the yeah, um, prep as well for key populations um i think that the one would be rock tie would be very good because they um yeah that they are the one that actually um doing the um the, the i think the global fund grants that is providing um some of this um uh, funding particularly to migrant workers uh yeah so that that, that would give a much more rounded um uh um i guess interview yeah piece because we all yeah we also don't understand as you can imagine like you know where this is coming from and 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 if we if if we're even talking to the right people to uh, or we're getting the right people into the room to um uh to find solutions you know uh because uh as you know as you mentioned like we there's been disruptions, okay, that's slowly coming up, but there shouldn't have been that disruptions in the first place, right? So it, it already shows, you know, there was, um, yeah, this, like, there was this public facing saying, oh, we work very well with the community, and then suddenly, <laughs> like, oh, what, this, you know, this hasn't been communicated with us, how do we then, yeah, let our client know, and, yeah, and, 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 and prepare people um, much better in this. So, I personally, there needs to be a much a uh, much more coordinated platform for the community groups to discuss with relevant um yeah people who are working in the um in the health sector in the um i guess yeah the in, uh the reimbursing um um and also I mean, maybe the law as well you know how that's been interpreted right before yeah, before statements are being um are being issued um because then it 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 um it doesn't provide clarity for community groups to move forward with whether they should provide service or not, uh, because they're not clear whether they, you know, they might get, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they might be breaking the law, right? That could be used against them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So, and then, and then people don't know then like, well, if, and then we don't know whether um, people are then accessing services through um, other, other means, or if, or if they feel they cannot come to the community clinics, then they are, that's it, they're not going to access, right? And that's, those are the information that we're also trying to, um, yeah, to gather in, in this, um, yeah, in this time. Um, uh, and I think there will be a lot more, um, conversations, um, yeah, going forward, um, Bobby, watch this space. Right, absolutely, absolutely. And, um, and all our prayers and energy and, uh, and power to you, Midnight and Epcom and all the groups uh, that are really trying to ensure that services uh, get resumed and rather uh, get scaled up even more so that Thailand and other countries are able to end AIDS by 2030. So Midnight, just a special request for, for NAM uh, AIDS map. If you can send us photos of the services which are uh, which got disrupted, so so of those community led interventions, some photographs which can be used by AIDS map, uh, this will be really great. Uh, uh, so that's all. Okay. Thank you again, and thanks a special thanks for the guidance, uh, like Raksha and others. Yeah. Um, and we'll we'll try to do whatever we can. So and count us in whatever two bits we can. Oh, do. great! We, we are all busy. Yeah. Thanks, Vinay. Thank you. You, um, you. Sorry. No, you're welcome. You on, you on our um a uh, newsletter list, right? Uh, no, I don't receive the. Are you? Can you're not. Keep me on it. Yeah, that'd be great. Okay, right, I'll, I'll, I'll add you on to that because yeah, because we yeah, because there's updates on that as 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 and when we get the uh, we have those meetings yeah with the um um yeah government as well yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks. Thanks. We'll do that. Thank you, Vinay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Bye bye. Bye.